first things yeah. first, we used to know a little bit of like, background and take them to East Kingdom. Yeah. Like, how did you start producing? Yeah. And when did you realise it was something that you wanted to like, pursue as a career? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I started playing, I come from a musical background, um, my dad plays the violin and my mum is an artist, so she's kind of like, you know, my parents are like cool with me doing music, they're not like, become a, become a banker or whatever, they're, like, they're happy with me uh, doing music. And um, I started, started having violin lessons when I was about four and um, I did that up until I was like 16, so I like classical background to start off with and then I started playing guitar when I was nine um, and I just got into other stuff like rock and you know all that, all that kind of stuff you start playing when you pick up the guitar um, and then um, I got into kind of hip hop and jazz and stuff when I was about 14 because my sister's boyfriend like was just really into it so I'd hear it through, through him and yeah, then it just kind of all picked up. I started producing when I went to sixth form because I studied music tech, A level, um, and uh, yeah, just kind of started making beats. And Can you like, recollect your earliest like, musical memory? Or just put those into one? Earliest musical memory has, has to be like the classical stuff with um, playing the violin. And because I, I started with Suzuki, which is where it's a teaching method where you learn by hearing and, and then playing as opposed to reading music yeah. and playing. Oh, so you can so, learn things by ear. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. So from an early age I was using it's my ear. Yeah. And that's I think that's probably kind of a big big reason I like jamming on my guitar, yeah. improvising and stuff. Yeah. So what, one thing that yeah I haven't yeah. mentioned is um, obviously on a few of your songs that you've, you've sung on there is is the vo is your voice something which you want to develop further yeah. in the future or definitely yeah yeah. Um, I guess the idea of Beat Take 2 and Beat Take 1 is that it's me as a producer and a beat maker. And then I kind of, in between those two, I kind of started singing a little bit. Um, and um, I want to get into songwriting and, and, you know, just using my voice more. So, yeah. Something to look so doubtful, yeah? Wanna, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And how, do you, how do you feel about your, your abilities to sing? Do you feel like you have a, a strong enough voice yeah. to like, do a whole album just like you and a few of like future spots? Or I think you I, never, yeah, I never thought I did, but yeah. people were like, you have a really nice voice, so I was just like, cool, that's good. <laughs> yeah. like, people said that I have my own sound in my voice, and like, it's a nice tone and stuff, so I was, you know, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I do want to, my next project is, is like a live band thing with me singing, songwriting, and yeah. So I will be singing on my next project. Predominantly. Yeah, predominantly. You will be. Okay. I will be, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Should we move on to the home? What do you want to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, first, what, is your, what would you say your main motivation is behind making music? Um, I mean, up until now, I've just really enjoyed it. So there's been no, like, this is what I love doing. Um, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather make a beat than play in my PS4, or like sometimes social. I'd rather make a beat than yeah. you know, see my friends. Like, it's, yeah. So it's not quite so as like, like forced to make music. You just do it in your own time when you feel like it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's forced, but um, but as of recently, I've kind of um, lacked motivation slash not really wanting to. I don't know just not, not feeling that inspired to do stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if it's because suddenly there's all this like external pressure, yeah. you know, people are like, oh, this guy's good. Like maybe, you know, maybe that's something that's subconsciously like stopping me from yeah, wanting yeah. to create. Yeah. But I don't know. Even stuff like us getting in contact with you, is that like, for you really unusual or do you get it quite often, people just wanting to um, feature you? I'm more used to it now. Yeah. At first it was only like a year, two years ago, but now, I mean, this is the first time that it's been a fashion fashion thing, yeah, so yeah. that's, you know, but I'm, I'm interested in that sort of thing as well, so, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, you talk about the um, the expectation, like the level of expectation, yeah, yeah. obviously, with all the projects that you've been doing, mm. and that uh, you have uh, like, gained like, some cult following seemingly overnight. Like, how, how does that, yeah. how is that? Like, 
obviously like we just had the incident outside and someone <laughs> yeah, yeah. just holding up their phone. And, we're, and also we're sat in here and your song comes on like yeah, 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 that was yeah, yeah. being really yeah. <laughs> I think as long as um as long as you're making music that you think is really good, then that's all cool. I think. I think I don't know. I feel like if it was hype about me um, you know, going out with someone or like I don't know, something a bit kind of trivial yeah. yeah but as long as I'm, I'm making music that I think is sick and like you know you're happy with I'm it happy with it then, then the hype's over something that's you know um, yeah and I'm, I'm not like a, my personality is quite um, laid back and uh, not in the limelight sort of thing so yeah. that's the best way to do because uh, you just let the music do the talking rather than exactly, yeah. other things away from that exactly. um, moving on um, who would you say are your main like musical influences like what really what's how are you like exposed to those people who've sort of helped you form your own style and stuff like that yeah. who are they yeah 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 like who the, the who, who's influence? helped you yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I know one off top but I'll let you say yeah yeah um, Jay Didder of course yeah yeah he's um he's a big influence of mine uh, I guess it's um it's a lot of jazz and stuff you know a lot of this guy called Robert Glasper, he's a jazz yeah. pianist. Um, I'm into all that sort of thing. Um, like nice chords and stuff. Yeah. You know, nice harmony, and that comes from the jazz and stuff. Um, in terms of my guitar playing, like John Mayer is a big influence of mine. Um, a lot of gospel guys like, that no one knows about. So gospel music has been a big influence. Um, and I've, I'm kind of heavily involved in like like the groovy stuff the stuff that's um, you know I went to see um, a trio last night called The Use of The, the Use of Kamal Trio and there's this, this guy called Henry Wu from Peckham he's a producer um, and it was him on piano a drummer and a guy on bass and it was just like right up my street in terms of live music it was just yeah. grooves it was like kind of Dilla crazy housey I don't know it's just <laughs> It's, it's more it's about the feeling than it. Yeah, it's about yeah, yeah, yeah it's about the feeling. Yeah. I mean, I've seen more recently you've been um, you've been dipping into something stuff from uh, like Brazil or like uh, that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, Brazilian love is one of my personal favourites. Always, because always get stuck in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> always get stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So obviously uh, you, you've gone into that side. So how did you get involved with that? The same sort of thing. I think um, part of it is checking out what Jay Diller listened to you because I was so obsessed with him for such a long period of time. Everyone goes through that period and they're obsessed <laughs> with Jay Diller. I'm just like, what did, how did you get that point? And the way to do that, find out what he listened to you. you know? um, and yeah, I just listened to a lot of like, a lot of Brazilian. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you sneak it up on I'm not going to be in there. There you go. Yeah, just, just digging for like, for, for music. Do you, um, do you, uh, dig for records, like in record shops? No, no, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a new generation of yeah, diggers yeah. who just go on YouTube and decide yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. I would like um, to do that in record shops. I'd like to, but, but I haven't got a record player, it's yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, like, it's long. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time listening to, like, jazz, um, Brazilian music from, I guess it's all pre, like, 21st century. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 70s, 80s and stuff. Just uh, moving on to like the beat tapes you've been making, who you know massively successful. Um, what would you say like the biggest difference was between beat tape one and beat tape two? Like, did you feel any pressure at all, or did you just sort of know exactly what you wanted to do and you just went and did it? Um, well, no one really like knew about beat tape one. It's still kind of underground because at the end of the day, it's like quite niche music. It's it's just you know two minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's just like beats that loop really, um, and people. You know, People love a, vo a voice, and there's nothing. Yeah. It's just grooves, really. So um, there was no pressure in terms of where to go next. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after BT1, I did an EP with Carmody yeah. called yeah, Out yeah. to Sea, and that's like live stuff with singing and guitar and stuff. Um, but yeah, BT2 is just—it was like the logical step to go next. Mm -hmm. More like um, features and with yeah, more yeah, vocal, vocal features and yeah. stuff. And, and yeah, like my progression since BT1. Yeah, it's showcase that. And um, the next project is to me is a live, you know, playing guitar, singing, live music, like a D'Angelo kind of sounding 
album would be mad. I'm not obviously. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're yeah. not gonna put that in there. <laughs> yeah, as a pressure on the expectation. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that bit. <laughs> no, but like in terms of the instrumentation, and yeah. the groove and stuff like that, that kind of vibe. Um, obviously, like, like you said, with beat take one, there was no, there was no pressure because you were just obviously in your room just making beats and whatnot. Yeah. Is there like a certain comfort you take from making music at home uh, as opposed to like now when there is a little bit more expectation uh, when you're in a studio? Is there a, I still make music yeah, in my yeah, bedroom. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is, that, yeah, is, there, is that comfort you should be in? To make music in my bedroom? Yeah, yeah, more so than if you're getting put in a session, say, with, with someone. Um, yeah, I think it is, yeah. I haven't done too much like writing new music out of my bedroom. Like, I normally, you know, I have people around to my, to my house just because it's like, I work best there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say there's any any more pressure. Could you describe like the process of what it takes for you to create what you have created? So like, sort of like a step by step guide. Because what we want to do is like you know inspire people to if they wanted to start doing it themselves mm. if they wanted to. Yeah. You know, you're 19 years old. Is it 20? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 years old. And, you know, it's incredible that you can you're doing that and there might be people right. who might want to take that step but yeah. may not want to so if you could just sort of like describe like a step by step way in which you start doing it you know you might make yourself a coffee before it or, you know what I mean it could be it could be anything really hot chocolate yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will be hot chocolate in terms of making the beats yeah so, yeah yeah yeah. Um, I think you have to want to do it first of all like obviously you have to have an interest in it number one um, find a software that works for you so there's the, you know logic Ableton, yeah. FL Studio, there's loads, loads out there, and just kind of um, start fiddling around, so learn to use the software, and um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, just just kind of mess about, yeah. and if you enjoy it, then you'll mess about more and more, yeah. and, and it comes to what you do every day. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. then, um, pause for food briefly. Yeah. yeah. Going cold. We can carry on. Carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Bring yeah. Bring yeah. 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 Nibble as you talk. Are you wicked? <laughs> <laughs> Interview with a with a burger. <laughs> so how did that burger taste? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that well, on a scale of one to ten, how good is that good? Burger. That's a slab of beef. Thank you. Sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Probably don't want to be instead. Now. Yeah. 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 I was um, gonna say, same time. Um, you recently performed uh, at the uh, Are We Live yeah. last year. Yeah, you yeah. referred to it, I think it was on your Instagram, you referred to it as the, your first proper live gig. Yeah. And um, uh, can you explain how, how satisfying that experience was in terms of like, the crowd reception and mm. how you felt when you were performing? Um, it wasn't that satisfying because. Um, because like I never intended on playing another song live oh, that I've written so far. Because they're all just like kind of stuff I made in my bedroom, just beats. Never intending to actually yeah, yeah. Yeah. people wanting to hear them or like yeah. exactly. So it wasn't that satisfying because I didn't I didn't really want to do the gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy I did it because it's a step forward. But like I, I didn't actually want to play that gig because it was just stress, you know. Um, it will be satisfying once I've written music, which I intend to play live. Because yeah. then I'll be comfortable and like, you know, it will, it will really work like, like I, I don't know. You feel like you're being better prepared. Yeah. Like, like you just be more fit for the exactly. stage or something. But saying that, like, I did play the songs that I played live and people were enjoying it. And yeah. It was nice to see, like, um, see people actually, like, vibing real life as opposed to Twitter or like Facebook or something. Yeah. It's more personal isn't it? Whether yeah. they're like, it's like real people yeah. Rather than yeah. like I like this song on Twitter, you know, retweet, yeah, that's yeah, all you exactly. get, you know, that's all you it's can do. Yeah, you never get to actually see people like yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's good. And how did how did that podcast come about with, uh, with you and Alpha and George? And yeah, yeah. How, well, how whose idea was that? Why did you feel that was it? something you wanted to be involved with? Well, it's kind of Barney's idea. We're, we've all been mates. Uh, well, I'm, I met. We all met through SoundCloud, really. I met um, Barney. Uh, no, I met Alpha first because I said, sent him a message saying I love your playing, I love your beats, like, I love to link up. So we, we had a session. But then I met Barney. 
because I ended up playing on a gig that Barney was on and so was Alpha. So I met Barney and then we kind of became friends. Like, we're all similar age, doing a similar thing, so we just kind of hang out. And then um, Jordan moved, moved from Brisbane to Brisbane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane to uh, like just down my road. Yeah. So um, we started doing music. And then he met Barney and Alpha, kind of all friends. And then Barney was like, let's do a podcast. So Simple as that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no big uh, process. Yeah. Just, yeah, let's do it, mate. <laughs> um, I like this question that you've written. <laughs> God, I'll um, get the glory. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll take the glory. Um, Nathan spotted on your SoundCloud page that it says you're not looking to work with rappers. Um, yeah, you've worked with a rapper on your latest, latest project. Um, and also that other song. Yeah. So, like, why, do you, why, why did you write that? Is that something which... Is that, like, a personal deterrent. preference? Is that yeah, it's more just a deterrent, really. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to ever work with rappers. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like... I, being a producer who makes beats, a lot of instrumentals, you're yeah. bound to get ones that sound like Jay Dilla. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. gonna get uh, what's the word like infiltrated with rappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just always send me a beat, and all this <laughs> stuff. You Londoners, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it still happens. Yeah, but less so, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's what I really and like. I, I do want to work with rappers, but I'm just selective. With, mm. you know, yeah. So you should be. So you should be. Because I think there's so much. Rubbish yeah, yeah, rap out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm very particular on what I like. Yeah. You know, like 90s kind of old school rap. Um, so just, who are some of your favourite rappers? Sorry to cut you off. Uh, yeah. Just to get a, yeah. an idea of the sort of rappers that you like. Um, I love like the kind of 90s slum village flow. It's all about the flow for me. Because yeah. um, they rapped about like crap, slum village. Like, it's, it's they didn't rap about anything substantial, but I love the way they flow. It's like a really lazy flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, I, I love Dylan's rapping. Yeah. Um, is it Baton? Baton, yeah. Martin, Martin, yeah. yeah. Um, Common, I love. Um, Common's good. What's Death and like all these guys. Um, and then Tribe. Tribe. Who? Tribe. Tribe, yeah, sorry, yeah. Tribe, of course. Like, yeah, these people. Um, yeah. And then modern guys, I like Goldling. I'm a big fan of Goldling. Yeah. I've recently got into him. Um, and yeah. That's enough names. <laughs> That's good. Drinks. Um, Should we ask him one and then let him in? No, we got that. We've only got the last couple. What are you? What are you looking forward to most in your career? Um. Right. Carry on making music. When I, when the live shows up and running, I think that'll be exciting for me. Because playing your guitar, you know, with mates or musicians, is nothing better than that. So just like jamming, um, traveling. Yeah, I'd love to travel. It's a good way to travel. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably it. So do you have any fears of the future? Yeah. With regards to your music career, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like, oh my, you know, get the wrong tube home. <laughs> in terms of your music career, you know, it's the only thing which, yeah, I think it's scary, it's scary doing being an artist. You never know what's going to happen next. And the difference between me and like another artist is that they want to be big, and I don't actually want to be. Yeah. I just, I just like making music, yeah. and um, I'm happy, you know. Kind of as long as I can make a living from it. And, um, I just, you know, um, you can't really control how fast things are going to go away. Yeah. So, like, you know, I think that's just why I'm doing stuff on my own. You know, I'm not, I'm not meeting labels. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just carrying what I'm doing um, on my own pace. Yeah. 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 That's the right approach to have. Yeah. 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 You don't want to sell yourself out, or you know, too early, or exactly that's scary. Be controlled too much by anybody. You just get to do your own thing and not worry. Yeah. So, Countless examples of people that reached the top so quickly, just as quickly, just shot they, down, they disappeared. Just, just like, like every you remember, single X Factor winner. Yeah, oh, do you remember <laughs> Tom? Is, like you know, 21, and Tom up and down already. Yeah. 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 Don't want that. No, you don't want that. I must have rushed, man. I said it's still 20 years old. No, it's still <laughs> young. Yeah, exactly. 
Do you know a guy called King Cruel? Yeah. King yeah, Cruel. Um, he's like a musician, singer guy from. He actually lives down my road. Oh, did you really? Um, yeah, yeah, same area. You're in a nice road. Yeah, you've got everyone on your oh, road. Yeah. <laughs> just like, you should just like close it off and make it like a music <laughs> road. Yeah. Um, but I like the way that he's done his, his music. Because he got signed to XL Records. And, um, but he never had Twitter or Instagram or any of that. He just like, yeah. I don't know how he did it. He just, like, he just got known by playing gigs really. And um, then they dropped him because his record hasn't done too well. But he's still like, Still just staying low key, just making music, yeah. Just yeah. kind of next album's coming, and like, yeah. I don't know, it's just like, yeah. I think that's like another subject I wanted to bring up was about like um, you know social media and you know the technology in order to push your music out. You know you can put it on SoundCloud for free and share it. Like, what would you have done if you didn't have those things? Because obviously you've built most of your foundation from that piece of music. So yeah, yeah. that's an interesting. Thing. Well, I didn't really pick music. Um, I wasn't like I'm going to do music. Definitely, I just started making beats, had SoundCloud, and then it started picking up. So. Like why not? It's probably my easiest option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed yeah, to like, yeah. going to uni or whatever. so. Uh, yeah. So it fell into it. Yeah, yeah. fell into it. Happened to be that like, really good at it. So. <laughs> yeah, happened to be really good. At it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just yeah, it just like worked out. It's just like. Yeah. Not bad. I might start now. So you've inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, getting a, I'm, getting a I'm getting a Mac and Logic now. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Why not? Yeah, that's, that's all, yeah, we'll turn them off so then it's, you don't feel pressured on the air recording. I'm going to say though, speaking of other sort of like, I interviewed them maybe 